Cervical spine examination. Lermit sign. Lermit sign describes electric shock sensation which occurs with neck flexion and often radiates down the spine. In some cases, this sensation goes to the extremities. It is associated with cervical myelopathy and multiple sclerosis. It is probably caused by hyperexcitability of the nerves which have become demyelinated. There is a difference between cervical radiculopathy and cervical myelopathy. In cervical radiculopathy, there is dermatomal pain distribution. If the pain radiates to the thumb and index finger, this is probably a C6 nerve root irritation. If the pain radiates to the middle finger, this is probably a C7 nerve root irritation. And if the pain radiates to the fourth and fifth fingers, then this is probably a C8 nerve root irritation. So if the pain goes to the C7 dermatomal area, then the disc herniation is between C6 and C7 and that will affect the C7 nerve root. Two tests are used frequently during cervical spine examination, and these tests could help in the diagnosis of cervical radiculopathy. Number one, the spelling sign, which is pain exacerbated by neck extension and neck bending and rotation towards the symptomatic side. And the other test is called the shoulder abduction test. The shoulder abduction test is done by putting the hand of the patient above the shoulders, usually over the head, and that will relieve the pain. This is a sign of cervical spine radiculopathy, and that test differentiates spine pathology from shoulder pathology. In cervical radiculopathy, there will be other findings of nerve root irritation such as numbness, parathesia, weakness, and the hyporeflexia. How about cervical myelopathy? Myelopathy usually occurs due to compression of the spinal cord. In cervical myelopathy, the pain is usually not the predominant feature. Pain is usually absent or poorly defined with vague sensory and motor changes. The patient may have discomfort with a dull aching pain or sometimes sharp pain. The patient will have signs and symptoms of upper motor neuron lesion, such as gait disturbance, wide or ataxic gait, and poor hand dexterity such as buttoning and unbuttoning a shirt, writing or holding a mug is difficult. Pathological long track signs will be seen consisting of the Huffman's, Pebineski, Clonus, finger escape, and Lermite signs in addition to hyperreflexia. When you examine the patient, the patient will have hyperreflexia and a positive Hoffman sign. What is the Hoffman sign? Hoffman's sign is done by flicking the nail of the middle or the ring finger, and that will produce flexion of the index finger to the thumb. There may also be a positive Bepineski sign. So when you do lateral stimulation of the plantar surface of the foot, that will elicit toe extension. You can also have positive Lermite sign. Neck flexion causing electric shock sensation and parathesia radiating down the spine and the extremities. Clonus is another sign of upper motor neuron lesion. 
What is clonus? It is a non-voluntary sustained movement of the ankle muscles with firm, passive, continuous stretch. How about the myelopathic hand syndrome? The patient will have thinner atrophy, positive finger escape sign. When the patient try to keep the fingers extended, the ulnar digits tend to abduct. How about the positive grip and release test? The patient will be unable to make a fist and release 20 times in 10 seconds. MRI is the best study for cervical disc disease. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.